So question number 27. So the rod PQ of length uh, root 2 meters and uniformly distributed mass of 10 kg is released from rest at the position shown in the figure. The ends side along the frictionless faces OP and OQ assume acceleration due to gravity G is 10 meter per second square. The mass moment of inertia of the rod about its center of mass and axis perpendicular to plane of the figure is ml square by 12. At this instant, the magnitude of angular acceleration of the rod is. So here, see here. So he's saying that so there is a rod, and the rod is sliding in the corner. So I can see it's sliding so between two faces. It's just sliding like this. This rod is sliding over here. So and I'm naming this rod as AB. This rod AB is a sliding. <coughs> So he gave this angle, so at this instant, the angle is 45 degrees. So he left at this instant and it started sliding in the corner. So I can say it's a sliding, it's neither having pure translating or pure rotating, it's having a combination of both translation and rotation. So at this instant, so when the angle made by the rod is 45 degrees, so what is the angular acceleration of this particular rod? So he gave this face as some OP and this face is OQ. So he's saying that the rod is sliding between the two faces, that's OP and OQ. The, these two faces are frictionless. Now see here, <coughs> this rod is sliding under the action of this weight mg. So due to this weight mg, there is a couple produced, and due to that unbalanced couple, the rod is sliding. Now see here, during this sliding motion, the rod is rotating about some center. So now see here, so at this instant, so I can say velocity of a point B will be in this direction, and velocity of a point A will be in this direction. So I am locating the instantaneous center for this particular rod. So at this instant, so I can say, so this is the instantaneous center of rotation for this particular rod. I can say this entire rod is rotating about this particular center. So if that is the point of rotation for this particular rod, I can say, so torque acting, so I can say this is center of rotation. So moment of inertia about center of rotation, I am calling it as I0. Instantaneous center of rotation is O. And moment of inertia of this particular rod about that point is I0. Then I can say like this. So torque acting on this particular rod is nothing but so I0 times alpha. It's rotating about that point. So I0 is nothing but moment of inertia of the rod so about this particular point. So he gave moment of inertia of the rod, so about center of mass, I can see it lies at a distance L by 2. He gave length of the rod as root 2. So length of the rod is given as root 2. <coughs> So he gave moment of inertia of the rod about its center of mass. So moment of inertia of the rod about its center of mass, Ig is given as ml square by 12. Now see here, so torque acting on the rod is nothing but I0 times alpha. And this torque is nothing but, this torque is produced due to mg. So you can see, this is center of mass, so weight of the rod is acting vertically downward direction. So at this instant, so this force, this force mg is producing an unbalanced couple, and due to that couple, this rod is rotating about that particular instant in the center wall. So what is the couple that is produced due to, the, due to this particular mass? So this is the force acting in this direction and this is the point under consideration. I can say this is rotating about this point. I can say for this case, so moment r so will be this one. I can say torque acting on this particular rod is nothing but mg into x. Due to this mg into x, so this rod is rotating. So I can say torque acting so is equals to mg into x. So you find I0, I can say moment of inertia of the rod about this point. So I can say like this, so moment of inertia of the rod so about this point. So you give moment of inertia of the rod about this point, so perpendicular to plane of the board. So you get moment of inertia so of the rod about this point. So I can use parallax's theorem, so just to find the perpendicular distance between the two points. So I am calling the perpendicular distance between the two points as some A. Now see here, so this is a 45, if that is 45, So if this is 45, I can say this is 45, this is 90. So this is 45, this is 90, so length of the rod is root 2. I can say this is the perpendicular bisector for this particular rod. Center of mass lies at the midpoint of the rod. Therefore I can say, so this distance is root 2 by 2. So I can write like this, sine 45 is nothing but, so A by, or I can use, 
just take tan 45. So tan 45 is nothing but opposite side, opposite of adjacent side. This is root 2 by 2. So I can say a is nothing but root 2 by 2. So I can say it's nothing but so 1 by root. A is 1 by root 2. So I can write like this. So so moment of inertia I naught. So it's nothing but so moment of inertia about centroid plus m. So perpendicular distance between the two axes a that is nothing but 1 by root 2 whole square. is equals to so this moment of inertia times alpha is equals to mg times x so what is this x so x is nothing but moment r so this is line of action of force and this is the point about it which it, about which it is rotating i know the perpendicular distance between these two lines this is x so this i am calling it as some x so i can say like this this is 45 so this is 90 so i can write like this cos 45 is nothing but adjacent side so by hypothesis is this one so I can say it is root 2 by 2 so cos 45 is nothing but it's 1 by root 2 it's 1 by root 2 root 2 goes off I can say x is half so x is half so I can write like this moment of inertia of the rod about its centroid is nothing but ml square by 12 ml square by 12 plus m into so 1 by root 2 whole square is 1 by 2 times alpha is mg by 2 so the value of mass is given length of the rod is given so I can get the value of alpha so I can say like this mass of the rod is 10 l square is nothing but root 2 whole square is 2 so divided by 12 plus mass of the rod is 10 so divided by 2 times alpha so the value of mass is given as 10 so g is also given as 10 it's 2 if I simplify this, if I will be getting the value of alpha. Just simplify this, you will get alpha as 7.5 radian per second square. So at this instant, the rod is ro rotating about this point. Oh. So what is the couple that is causing the rod to rotate? It is something but that is due to gravity. So this is the torque that is acting on the rod and making the rod to rotate about that point O. So I can write, so if I know point O, so about point O, so I alpha is nothing but torque acting on the rod. Just equate both of them, you can get the value of alpha. 